Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here. Uh, welcome to my studio. Hope everyone's happy and well. I'm going to do a couple of birds. I've got a pencil here. This is 2B Derwent graphic pencil, just an ordinary um, lead pencil. I don't always draw, do I, um, before um, I paint. But when I'm going to do a bird, it's it's probably best if you do. So um, think about birds. I want to make them fairly big because, that is to say, relative to the size of the paper, because otherwise um, I won't have enough room to do the doodles on. So if you start, well, if you start with the beak, right, you are going to determine the size of the bird that comes after it, aren't you? So you could you could say, well, I won't start with the beak then in that case. Um, that's a silly thing to do. So I'll start with the body because the body is what's going to tell me uh, what kind of bird it is and so on. So we'll, we'll do the body and um, we'll just indicate the wing and tail coming out like that. And I, I'll do a sketch of this so that you can uh, use that if you like. So then now it's easier to say, okay, that's the size of the beak and the eye is gonna go here. Okay, something like that. And then his, his legs always come out at an angle. And if you want it to look a little bit cute, you put them at an angle a little bit like that. And then you can draw the branch through his feet. Okay, and then a bit of a branch going up behind. Then we will do another one up here. Um, so again, just draw an oval for the body. And as soon as you get like that, you can sort of see, oh yeah, yeah, that's, a, that's got a sort of bird-like look to it, hasn't it? And so we'll stick in his tail. And if you watch birds, you'll notice that they do... Um, they vary an awful lot in the way they arrange themselves. So uh, we could have his legs going forward like that. I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe we'll put his leg, one leg going. No, that doesn't look right. I don't know, let's put his nose beak on first. His eye, okay. So where's he standing? How is he standing? You're going to have his legs like that, or are we going to have him a little bit more upright? Uh, no, that doesn't look like a bird to me. So we will go with forward reaching feet like that. And then we need to put the branch in upon which he standeth. Like that. So now we have two birds on our sheet. So I'm going to rub out the extra lines because they will show underneath the paint, even with Kiritaki, which is a little bit opaque. So we'll get rid of those extra lines. Um, and we'll put some branches, uh, some leaves on these branches and we'll build those up as we go along. We don't need to do anything about that just yet. So let's uh, make sure that we've got the eye in place and the beak. And uh, now we can start painting. Um, let's use a fairly small brush. Uh, I've got here a size seven. Draw well, round. That's probably going to be okay. 
And what shall we do? What shall we do? How should we do this? I forgot to rub out the... Oh, it's Sunday today, isn't it? So are we going to go really uh, whimsical uh, in our coloration? What are we going to do? Um, I found a quote today from Michelle, Michelle Shea. I think she does a lot of mandala paintings. The desire to do something is God inside talking through us. And uh, this is very true, isn't it? Um, so I'm sort of saying to myself, come on, listen, God is trying to tell you something here. Yeah? What does he want me to do with this bird? And we've done lots of birds, haven't we? Um, lots of whimsical birds. We've done ones where we just wet the, the shape of the bird and let the colour flow. Maybe we'll do that and uh, not fuss too much about it. So I'll just go round the eye and we'll wet this bird all over. And then I think I almost feel like going eeny, meeny, makaraka, farewell, dominaka, om, pom, push. But I'm not going to do that. Maybe I'm not even going to use these paints. Perhaps that's the problem. Let's put those away. Let's go for this lot here. Yes, let's do that. Sometimes your first idea is not necessarily the best. So, uh, I don't, still don't know, turquoise, turquoise. And we're going to doodle on this. We are. So let's have two shades of blue. And maybe a bit more darker blue up the top here. I don't know. And a nice blue tail. And the one in front, what colour should we do that? Should we do that green? Let me do the green. I'm not going to wet it, and then afterwards you'll be able to see if it makes any difference. Nice three way green. Yeah, and uh, this blue, I could probably make that a little bit more powerful. I started with turquoise, but. Okay, and then we're going to be putting in some legs, aren't we? And uh, I think I'll leave the legs for a second and I'm going to put in the branch first. Shall we do the branches in a bright colour or a dark colour? Maybe we'll go with brown, perhaps. Maybe an orangey brown. I 
Maybe we'll vary it a little bit. This one could be a bit darker. And I'm just drawing in, it's very, very simple, just, just simple lines, not trying to make anything fancy out of it. The branch, so we just come up here. And now we can have some fun with some leaves and we'll pick up some, let's go for some different shades of green and we'll just drop in some leaf shapes and we, we can keep them really simple, we'll add some yellow, we can keep them really simple because we're going to doodle on top of them. Green goes with both blue and green, obviously. Uh, I'm just mixing yellows into the greens using the ready-made greens in the palette and letting it sort of mix a bit on the brush. Okay. And we will be using pen on this as well. So what we probably need to do now is let it dry. So that's dry now and I'm going to think about now adding a little bit of uh, a little bit of floral interest here and there and I'm just going to try to avoid painting dried blood. It's actually quite surprising how often when you add yellow to pink you get this horrible Horrible, horrible, horrible colour, which I like most colours, but I don't like that. So we'll just pop in some blossoms here and there, very loosely, because we're going to sharpen it all up afterwards with um, pen, which just gives it some nice colour, a little bit brighter than just the green. Then I'm thinking um, if we add some mauve to the green, add some green to the mauve, probably more to the point. Nope, that's not right either. Uh, don't always get it right. Let's have some lilac, that will do. Yes, something like that for some more depth to our leaves. Gives us more to play with later. These ones are sort of supposed to be a little bit in the background. Okay, going to think about the legs now. We we'll just put them in as a light brown, then we can um, ink them a bit later. I'm not very, um, what's the word? Uh, eloquent today. I'm not. I don't know why. But 
There we are. Sorry about that. One of those days when... Okay, so I'm going to go over these branches with the darker colour in some places, just to allow the flowers to stand out a bit better and to contrast with the colour of the legs and feet. And what I've done there is just added um, phthalo blue to the brown. So it gives us a little bit of shadow. And then we can sort of do the same thing here. That's a little bit better. Okay. Um, still wanting, I think, some more leaves. So now we'll come in with a soft green like this. more different shapes and all different colours. Don't forget their little stalks that join them to the uh, branch. And the question is always, you know, where, where to stop and I always think, well, stop when you get bored. Uh, oh, you think, uh, I think that's enough. That'll do. Okay, so now, again, a quick uh, dry with the hairdryer. And the development of this painting is uh, interesting because now I feel I need to make the birds stronger because once you get into the painting and you start doing things and you're not quite so tentative, you can see where you actually want it to go. So we've got the flowers and the leaves, which are much darker than a plain piece of paper. So now I feel I want some darker shades of blue and green on the bird. So. So now that's a, that's a bit better. We could do brushwork on some of these bigger leaves, bringing in some veins with the, with the paint, or and or. Depends if you feel you want to practice your fine lines with a brush or whether you can't be bothered and you just want to use a pen. And uh, I'm getting the feeling that pens are going to be called for soon. You can also, uh, it's quite nice to do half of a, or part of a leaf in a different color. It all adds to the overall effect. I was looking at, uh, what's it called, spoon, spoon, something or other. They do designs of fabric last night. Oh my God, they've got like a billion, billion, trillion um, designs for watercolour flowers to put on your duvet cover. I'm like, oh my goodness. Right, need to dry this again. Okay, so I've got my um, Tombow Fudenosuke pen here. This is the uh, black hard, but it's not really hard, um, a brush pen kind of thing. It, it gives a light and a dark, no, not a light and a dark, a thick and a thin line. So uh, when we start drawing in the leaves, we can go thick, 
and thin like that very easily. Thick. So there we go. So then we can just uh, scribble in our flowers like that. And make sure you keep well away from your painted lines because you want this to be lively. So you get the feeling of movement by avoiding the effect of colouring in. You have to forgive me today because my, my right hand is playing up, as we used to say in England. I don't know if you know that expression in America. It means giving me trouble. But undaunted, she continued with her project. Okay, and I'm going to put some white on that in a minute to bring that on forward. So, but was it called Spoon What It? What is it? I've got to look that up. I can't talk about it unless I can remember what it's called. Spoon. Spoon. Flower. Duh. Spoon flower. Uh, they take um, designs and they turn them into fabric for you. It's not as easy as you think, though, because you have to get the repeats right. Otherwise, it just looks silly. There's quite a lot of work involved and designers of fabric, you know, they know what they're doing. and I don't. So I don't think I could really do that. Okay, so we're coming along here with our with our design. Let's grab some white for this one. Definitely needs white. Maybe here. Sometimes the white doesn't actually come out very white, as you can see. You don't really know, do you? So we're just working our way down here now. I've got to the legs. So we'll straighten up his legs. Give him some little toenails, some feet. And give him an eye. And this one too, perhaps. And your feet. the leaves down here and the flowers. I think it's best if when you do the flowers you decide on a, a design for your particular scribble and you do them all very similar. It can be different sizes and obviously there's going to be a certain amount of randomness but um, you know to have a little bit of coherence you want to have a certain look you know. Same as leaves, you know, you're going to vary a bit, but you need a, a look. Okay. 
And contrast is really important. So that's why, that's why for a, a, a weak painter like me, because I'm not a strong watercolorist, not like Louise de Massey, um, for a weak watercolorist who has problems with tonality, like me, and getting the darks in, the pen is a wonderful finishing touch because that's how you get your contrast. For me, that's what works. And I was reflecting on this the other day, and I know I've, st I've told this sort of story before. It's not really much of a story, and everyone's got a similar one. But when I was a kid, I spent a lot of time in hospital as a child because I had um, a weak chest, as they used to call it in England in those days, and uh, often succumbed because of the pollution uh, in London at that time. I was born in in the in the what did we used to call it? The, the, the smoke. Born in the smoke. Yes. And boy, was it! Oh, you die and put a scarf round your mouth. You can't go out like that. You need to cover up your mouth and keep the smog out of your throat. My mother would say. So, and I expect there's some English people out there who relate to that. And yeah, these days in California or Alberta in Canada, it's a similar kind of deal. Anyway, um, so as a result of being a weak chested individual with a bit of asthma, I um, spent a lot of time in hospital and one year I had pneumonia. And uh, why am I saying this? Um, oh, yes, I know, because um, I used to love as a child, I was like five years old, and I used to love copying the cartoons that were in the newspaper. Andy Cap and um, and that kind of thing. And again, people who are English will know what I'm talking about. Um, going on to the birds now. And anyway, I got quite upset because I couldn't. Um, I in the, the pet, they wouldn't let me have the newspapers in the hospital, and I couldn't have my painting drawing things. I used to draw, the, copy the cartoons. But when I came out of hospital, my dad had saved all the newspapers. And he'd put them all in the stair, under the stairs cupboard. And uh, I said to him, oh, Dad, is there any newspapers? And he said, yeah, I've kept them all for you. And so I had a very happy time going through all the newspapers, copying the cartoons. And <laughs> that is probably why I have such a strong affiliation, not a loose affiliation, but a strong affiliation with pen work, isn't it, when you think about it? because it goes back to my early childhood, quite early childhood, when I wanted to become a commercial artist. But it didn't transpire. Like so many people, my dreams went down the toilet because my mother died and my father married a woman who didn't like me. I don't blame her, really. I was probably a horrible teenager. Um, anyway, c'est comme ça la vie. We probably want to rub out some of the superfluous pencil lines at some point, but we do need to be careful because, um, yeah, what can happen is you can smudge what you've done because you think it's dry and it isn't. So we won't do too much of that, but I will do that before we do the thumbnail. Um, so now the question is, what are we going to do with these here birds? Are we going to do some embellishments? I'm going to put some dots, for example, on their tails. You have to be a little bit cautious when you start. And you think to yourself, hmm, I don't know. How much of this can they take? Would they be better left alone or should we go ahead and do it? It's hard. And if I wasn't doing this to a deadline, I would take a photocopy at this point and try out some of the embellishments and see how far I wanted to go. try it out, you know, but um, 
Yeah, I think I think I will, but I'm not going to use too much white. Let's keep it. Keep it uh, a little bit low key. Sort of aiming for somewhere between markings that you might actually find on a bird and uh, and embellishments which you definitely wouldn't. So we probably won't go for spirals. They look a little bit like thrushes, don't they? I do think it might be an idea to put a little bit of colour on the beaks. And I think we're probably getting to the point where I'm going to say, I think that will probably do. We could, what do you think of the idea? She said, scrabbling around in her pile of junk. Well, I think that will probably do. And I'm sort of thinking, oh, I could easily now at this point in time, um, I could uh, spatter it, um, could add something here maybe. Maybe we need, perhaps we need a little, one more leaf, do you think? Something like that. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to call that a day. I hope you enjoyed that. That was quite fun. A little quick one. Let's we'll see how that goes. And uh, give us a like and subscribe, turn on notifications, become a member, and I'll see you again here next week with another floral. I've got one already prepared, a little bit similar to the one we did yesterday. And this time it's going to be in reds and greens instead of purples and turquoises. So I'll let you go, and I'll see you again soon, everybody. Bye for now. Bye-bye.